Well, hi kids, it's time for the Jump Ministry message of the day. We're in part eight of Now What? Get your Bibles. We're going to be where I told you yesterday, remember? We're going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit a little bit today. Here we go. Well, now kids, I need you to hear this. We're in Now What? Part eight. And the key thing I need you to remember is God will help us to follow and obey him. Now, we talked about a new lifestyle yesterday. And so how do we get this new lifestyle? How do we become more like Jesus? Well, God will help us. He'll help us follow and obey him because he gives us his Holy Spirit to enable us to live the Christian life. I'll talk to you more about that in a second. But the interesting thing is, if you go on the Internet and type in Holy Spirit, you won't believe all the different beautiful images you get but I chose this one because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus at his baptism in the form of a dove. So that's why I picked this little white dove coming down through the clouds. Isn't it pretty? Okay, be right back. Hi, kids. Hey, tonight I'm going to switch back to the Christian Standard Bible because it uses a word in the translation that I find very helpful to me when it comes to understanding the Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles, would you turn them please to John chapter 14. This was a time when Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure. He was getting ready to leave and we're going to see the disciples were very confused and did not understand what he was talking about. But there's some beautiful words of promise in here that I want to share with you. Jesus says in verse 1 of chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, do not or don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If not, I would have told you. I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to where I'm going. Well, we're going to see now that one of the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was talking about, and he was bold enough to speak up about it. Thomas, Lord said, Lord Thomas said, We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him good words here. And then, a little bit later, Jesus says, if you love me, this is verse 15, I'm just dropped down a few verses, if you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit here. This is one of our first introductions to the Holy Spirit. And he says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. That's a, a child that doesn't have parents. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. The one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I will also love him and will reveal myself to him. And then, a little bit later, in verse 26, this is Jesus. He has just said, I've spoken these things while I remain with you. He's getting ready to say goodbye. And he says these immortal words here. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. Kids, it's going to take a long time to truly understand who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. I can only introduce him to you tonight and then give you some pointers here because our, our key idea tonight is that God will help you
to follow and obey him. Well, how does he do that? Through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside us once we come to Jesus. Look, God gives us his Holy Spirit to enable us to live the Christian life. I want you to think about that. And as I read the verses to you, the counselor, a counselor is someone who helps you uh, get through something or, or overcome something. That's one of the jobs a counselor does. And the Holy Spirit that lives inside us is called the counselor here. I've spoken these things to you while I remain with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So how can we follow God and obey him? By learning to listen to the Holy Spirit who will prompt us and give us ideas of what God wants us to do. And if we have been memorizing Bible verses, that same Holy Spirit will guide us to a verse and say, oh, I remember we learned that in Jump. I rem That's the Holy Spirit doing that. Guiding you, counseling you, giving you good advice. All right. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm getting all these tornado warnings and all kinds of weather warnings, so I'm going to have to sign off early here. I want to do a devotion with you from the Purpose Driven Life, and we'll try to stay on as long as the computer will stay on. I'll be right back. Well, okay, kids, here's what I would like you to do today, and I'm calling it an assignment, but you do it if you want to, in your journals. Write down one question that you'd like the Holy Spirit to help you with. Then, take a couple of minutes and just talk to God about it, whatever it is. God hears all prayers. All right, let's see what's next. Corey, we have some thunderstorms coming, and it's getting real steamy outside. And I thought I heard thunder a couple minutes ago. So we're going to have to record this and get it up online real quick. Okay. Hey, be careful, kids. Don't play around in thunderstorms. That's right. Don't play around in thunderstorms. Hey, we're going to be talking about heaven ready, okay? Okay. All right. And it comes from the book of Romans, chapter 14. And they just put part of the verses in here for us. For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. It sounds like God's going to be asking us some questions. When you give an account of something, it means you're explaining what you did with something. Let's see what this says. Knowing your purpose prepares you for life after you die. Yeah, you read that right. Life after death. One day, you will stand before God and he will examine your life before you enter eternity. Fortunately, God wants you to pass this test. So he's given you the questions ahead of time. Wow. Wow. So we're going to take a test, but we know the questions ahead of time. I think I can deal with that. Can you deal with that? Let's see. There's another tornado warning. Oh, my, my, my. First, here's the first question. What did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? The answer will determine where you spend eternity. Hmm. The only thing that will matter is if you accepted what Jesus did for you and learned to love and trust him. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Remember, we just read that in John chapter 14, verse 6. So this is kind of neat how this is mentioning the same thing. The second question, what did you do with what I gave you? Ooh. What did you do with your life, all the gifts, talents, energy, and relationships? Did you spend them on yourself, or did you use them for the purposes God made you for? The answer will determine what you do in eternity. Hmm. Following God's ways will prepare you to give the best answers. Well, didn't we just read something about God will help us obey and follow him because of the Holy Spirit? And now in our devotion, it's saying something very similarly to it. Following God's ways will prepare you to give the best answers to those questions. What did we do about Jesus? And what did we do with the life God gave us? Wow, well, we know the questions ahead of time. So let's start working on those answers, okay, Corey? Yeah, I want to use my gifts to praise Jesus. Yes, you do. And here's a prayer. I spend a lot of time focusing on myself, Lord. Help me to use what you gave me for the purposes, for your purposes, and not for my own gain. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to have to read that one again later on. Kids, we're going to get out of here because the thunderstorm's coming. 
and we're going to lose power, and the computer will go blink, and then that'll be it. So I love you. Have a great night. Be safe, and stay away from windows. And maybe if you got a radio, you might want to turn it on so you can hear where these storms are moving into our area. But we're not going to be afraid of that because God's going to carry us right through them, all right? All right, have a great night. Let's pray. And we'll just pray those storms aren't too bad. Heavenly Father, please watch over my friends now as these storms are coming to our area. And just uh, once they have cleared off, help us remember to give you praise. And we'll just praise you in the storm and after the storm. So please watch over our families and our friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll see you soon. Be good. Be kind. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, see ya. All right, kids, that's going to do it for part eight. Hey, join us tomorrow for part nine, where we're going to learn about resisting temptation. That sounds interesting. I hope you'll come back. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.